और और आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू नो द सिलेबस ऑफ ओडी एंड पीडी ओके यू कैन डू यू नो द सिलेबस नो मैम ओके श्योर बेसिकली वेन एवर आई एम सींग दिस स्क्रीन आई एम नॉट सींग द मेन गूगल मीट पेज सो आई कैन नॉट सी यूर चैट बॉक्स ओके फाइन नाउ uh we have two modules okay right so one is ordinary differential equation and another is partial differential equation and the other parts of your mathematics three paper will be taught by al okay now all of you know probably know the form of differential equation a differential equation is nothing but you have suppose you have a independent variable and a dependent variable okay so you have your differential coefficients a general form i may write okay and ordin differential equation is nothing but the relation between a dependent variable independent variable and their differential coefficients now if your number of independent variables if uh, you know it's one it will be a ordinary differential equation like okay and if suppose your here y is uh, uh, dependent on x and suppose u is dependent on xy then we can form a partial differential equation depending on okay someone okay so so you know there may be this kind of equations that is u sorry this is u right this is u del y del x square so you may have any form of this type of you may have another independent variable suppose function of x y z like that from that we can form partial differential equations and when there is only one independent variable and uh, like this d dy basically you have come across this type of equations earlier so you know the form of this differential equation so now we will concentrate on only ordinary differential equations okay and you know uh, the order and the degree of differential equations i know you have gone through this right what will be the order and degree of the differential equation suppose i write uh this is an ordinary differential equation your dependent variable is y your independent variable is x and what is the order of this uh, differential equation you know what is the order 3 3 and what will be the degree 1 1 right and suppose i write what is the order of this equation differential equation 3 right 3 it's 3 order is the highest order of the derivative here it is 
and what will be the degree of this equation? Three. It is three. three. First, three. we have to rationalize this uh, three by two. That means we will square this. Then we will get the order. Okay. The highest degree of this highest order derivatives, it will denote the degree of the differential equation. Okay. Now, so we have our ordinary differential equation with order with degree known. And what is a solution of this equation? A solution of this differential equation will be nothing but a relation between y and x, right? And, okay, suppose I have, did, this is very known equation for you. So I am using this and please try to join within five minutes otherwise, okay. So this is your, suppose uh, we have a differential equation of this, okay. So we have to find a relation between y and x such that it satisfies this condition. Now you will say y is equal to sine x, y is equal to cos x, is a solution of these equations, right? Because if y is equal to sine x, we differentiate and we will get dy by dx is equal to cos x and d2y minus sine x. So it satisfies this equation, right? So y is equal to sine x is a solution of this equation. y is equal to cos x is solution of this equation. But the general solution will consist of this will be the general solution of this equation. This differential equation at remember the number of arbitrary constants will be the same as of the order of the differential equation. So here the order of the differential equation is two. So your number of arbitrary constants is two. That is here is A and B. So an nth degree ordinary, uh, sorry, nth order ordinary differential equation will have N arbitrary constants and Putting some particular value of A and B, we will get particular solutions like that. Suppose your A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0, we will get this. Suppose your Y is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, we will get this. So these two are particular solution of this equation. Now, sometimes it happens, uh, you won't get the... Uh, all the solutions from basically this uh, general solution is called also the complete integral. That means you will find all the solutions from these general solutions. But sometimes it happens some solutions that are called singular solutions cannot be derived from these general solution. And there are some other methods to find those particular, uh, those singular solutions. And here we will solve only for general solutions or in some cases particular to okay so whatever be the order of the differential equation we have to find a solution and uh, with number of arbitrary constants equal to the order of the differential equation now what will our solution mean geometrically it will be general solution will represent a family of curves and you put the uh, uh, arbitrary that is you put a particular value to these arbitrary constants and you will get a particular curve of that family of curve okay so now we have to and I know you have already solved 
some particular first order or second order differential equations in in your class 12 right so you know what is a linear equation and what is a nonlinear equation linear od and nonlinear od do you know Yes. Okay. It, is it linear or nonlinear? Linear. Okay. And why do you tell this is linear? Um, actually, when uh, many in um, equation, uh, the mm -hmm. differential coefficients are not multiplied together, then we can call them linear. Right. Basically, the fact is that you do, you don't have product of your that is y dy dx type terms right that is your dependent variable the product term of dependent variable and their differential coefficient yes okay yes and suppose this is a nonlinear equation right It is first term is you uh, if you expand this x plus y to the power whole cube, there is uh, you will get four terms, right? The sum of the terms will be multiplied with y cube dy dx, right? So this is nonlinear. And I am giving you some another example. Suppose you are having okay, this is also a nonlinear because of this. The degree won't be greater than one. Do you uh, do you know the definitions or not? Yes, ma'am. No. Okay. So, uh, can you distinguish that this is a nonlinear equation, right? Yes. Okay. And tell me where. Uh, okay. In real life, we will. Now, what I want to say that solving a nonlinear equation is not easy, right? Yes. Uh, it is very difficult to solve in real life too. So there are not such uh, methods to solve. You can, and one thing, you cannot solve all differential equations. Okay. Yes. It doesn't mean that you have a differential equation and you can solve it. It cannot. Okay. You cannot. Basically, we know some methods. We can apply those methods where those methods are applicable, right? So we always try to apply those methods to uh, form whichever form is suitable for us. And we try to reform the given equation, whether we can fit that method or not. Sometimes it is very easy and sometimes not. And uh, nonlinears are much more difficult than solving linear. So, and your syllabus contains only linear differential equations. And for first order, we will have some nonlinear. Only for first order. Okay, there are some methods known. Ma'am? Ma'am, linear equation or nonlinear equation, or definition diagram, Bulban? Acha, okay. Linear and nonlinear uh, is where a differential equation which contains the suppose you have your dependent variable is y and independent is x, it will contain all its terms that is your dependent variable and its derivatives 
first degree terms only. That means you will have only dy dx, not this type of terms or d2y dx. This is only not these terms, right? If these terms appears, uh, it will be nonlinear. Or this equation won't contain any product of this dependent variable or the differential coefficient. Okay, in any form, that is any product of these two. That is here, but if you have x squared d2y, this is not nonlinear because it is not, it is the independent variable, right? So if you have a product term of these uh, dependent variable with its differential coefficient of say maybe first order, maybe second order, maybe third order, this is not a linear term and there won't be any degree higher than one for these differential coefficients, right? Then it will be called a linear equations, which does not contain this, and which contain any of these terms will be called a nonlinear equation. Okay. Now, we will... First, we will move to, okay, there is a conditions, uh, we should know that whatever first order, first, we are uh, solving these equations, there is a conditions called Lipschitz conditions. If the function satisfies the condition, suppose your uh, first order, first degree differential. Okay, tell me, first order, first degree differential equation, I can write this as this. This is first order, first degree, and it is a safe function of x and y. Basically, we write this equation as mdx, plus n dy is equal to zero, where m is a function of x and y and n is a function of x and y. Now, we, we can prove there is a theorem that if this function is continuous, suppose your function is defined in a given region, if this function is continuous and single valued in this region and this partial derivative exists, then this equation will have solutions, okay? So in general, whatever first order, first degree equations in your uh, book, you will confront uh, the fact is that the functions are, we don't check for these conditions, right? You may say we don't check for the conditions, but how can you say that there exist a solutions? But Whatever we form, we get in general. You see, we will see this m and n in terms of polynomial of x or y or some function which you know is differentiable. That is your trigonometric function or e to the power x. So, in general, whatever problems we encounter in our books, so they already satisfy this condition. So, we don't go for this checking, but in uh, if you if you try to find a solution, then basically you need to check. And you know, in, in your engineering subjects, you, we just don't go for the proofs. So you know there is a theorem which states that if your this function is continuous and single valued in a region G, this is uh, it has partial derivatives, continuous partial derivatives, and you know. Well, whenever we are assuming that the function is continuous, this function is derivable, basically we are using the property that means we it is defined, this is, so our solutions exist and for unique solutions, there are, there is some extra constant that is a Lipschitz constant and I have given you the 
I think in the PDF, the condition is given there. So there is a Lipschitz condition, basically nothing but you, uh, the function is bounded in a region. So your distance will be always fixed. That is your solution point will be always in the given defined region. So we will get always a solution. Okay, so we won't check for these conditions or anything like that, but you should know that there exists some criteria which a first order first degree equation must satisfy to have a solution. And uh, okay, I am write down these lips to, uh, okay. Lips to Scotty criteria, if you are interested, you can go through this, okay? So, suppose we have a first order first degree equations we need to solve. We already know one method you have already done. This is separation of variables, right? It is very easy. You have already done this, I think. In your class 12, suppose I have a problem like I am taking a very simple problem. dy dx is equal to 2x1 plus y square. This is nothing but 1 plus y square dy is equal to 2x dx. And we are integrating both sides. And I, what you will get? It is nothing but 1, one third y cube is equal to x square plus c. Right? You can always follow these uh, steps, right? I am just integrating here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And since it is a first order equations, we will only have one arbitrary constant. And you can see that it, it will represent a curve in XY plane. And if you put a value of C for any arbitrary C, you will get a particular curve. Okay. Now, Separation of variables is nothing but suppose you are dy by this equation is written as m dx n dy zero. So your m is a function of x y, your n is x y. So you can separate such a way that you will easily integrate. That is, you know how to do it. You have done in your integration chapters, okay? So this is very easy. So one method is simple method is separation of variables. And now I am, uh, now I wish to tell you that unless stated otherwise, suppose in a problem it is given that you have to solve this equation in by this method only, then you have to use that method. Otherwise, you are free to choose any method you know that means, suppose you can solve any other method, any equation you can solve by any other method, you know. So, unless stated that you have to solve, otherwise you can use any method. So, there is no restrictions that you have to use this method only or that method only. It's your choice. Because it's, it's a differential equation, you have to do your integration. So, you... Uh, whatever way the integration suits you, you will do your integration. Okay. Next is homogeneous. And you have done this. That is, you know the form of this, right? Right, and you have put y is equal to bx in the form, and then you have differentiated this, and then you have replaced in the given equation, and you have solved this type of problems, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I won't go through this. I know you can, uh, you have solved this type of problems. Now, there are
No. Exact equation. So our given first order equation is this, right? At a when this differential equation will be called exact equation. When this m dx plus n di is equal to zero can be written as du. That is to for total differential of some function u, where u is a function of x and y. Then the solution will be nothing but u is equal to c. And what type of function I am talking about is nothing but x dy plus y dx. Suppose you have this. You know this is nothing but dx y is equal to zero, right? So you have, uh, suppose I have x dy minus y dx by y squared. I can write this as, what I can write this as? D of x, D of x by y. D of? X by y. No, there will be a minus sign. If I differentiate. Oh. This is minus y dx, so I have a I should have a minus, right? That means if this was y dx minus x dy, this is y dx minus x dy by y square, it will be d by x y. Hello, so, ma'am. Ma'am, bolchi kyo bote dukte bache na kyo? Okay. Yesterday bolche. Okay. 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 Example or I can give you a problem to solve. Should I? Okay, and tell me what is the result? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So I am giving you. Okay, let me check. Exact equation. Okay. Okay, two x y plus e to the power x y dx minus e to the power x dy is equal to zero. Thank you. 
x square is hmm. equal to uh, minus e to power x by y. X square is equal to is equal to uh, hmm. minus e to hmm. power x by y. Hmm. E to power x by. And there should have a constant. Yes, yes, yes. Plus c. Okay. So everyone agrees with that. Everyone agrees with that solution. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, okay. Now, sometimes it may happen your m and n, uh, the form of this may be like that, so that it you cannot see by inspection only that it is a total differential of some function. Okay. So, what is the necessary and sufficient condition for a differential equation to be exact? The necessary and sufficient condition for a differential equation to be exact is okay. Our given equation in the form is m dx n dy is equal to 0. And if this m and n is related in such a way, that is your partial differentiation of m with respect to y, with uh, partial differentiation of n with respect to x, will be same. And I will prove the first part. And OK, I may say that proof is not necessary for your exam purpose but I just so that you know how it happens your m dx plus n dy is equal to zero so suppose uh, I have taken that this equation is exact I, if I have taken this equation is exact then I will find out that this condition is true and the converse will be if this condition is true we can find out this is exact so if this is exact I can write is it like this du is equal to zero okay now we know is total differentiation du u is a function of x and y will be nothing but right then what is this du mdx so your m will be del u del x and your n will be del u del y now what is this del m del y is Now, if this is continuous, then you are this the either way you can differentiate with respect to either first for x and either for y, it will be the same. The result will be the same. So these two is same. This is del y del x and this is del x del y. These are same. So your del m del y is equal to del and del x. Now, uh, okay, you can from this, what you can check, this your m is del u. Here the solution of this equation is u is equal to c. Okay, so if your m is del u del x, suppose if we check for a differential equation is exact or not, then 
we try to solve that equation suppose it is exact then uh, how you will get this u u is nothing but so you will uh, mdx and we will integrate mdx and you will taking y as constant you will get u in terms of x and y and from another u will be uh, we will have from this if we integrate n dy with respect to y taking x as constant and we will uh, we won't take the terms which will repeat and then the sum of these uh, terms we will get we will form this u okay so the solving a uh, exact equation will be using the rule that you have to first integrate your u will be u will be integration m dx and obviously since your m terms will contain y taking y as a constant we will integrate this and plus n dy of the taking those terms of n which does not contain x and why we will do that because the x terms will be already comes from this equation and you can if you integrate uh, separately both these terms and you will see some terms will be uh, common where this n has the x terms okay i can explain it through an example so that you will okay and this now first i have to take a equation which is an exact right so suppose okay i am uh, okay uh, the you can uh, what problem i have given you just before So what is m here? This whole term is m, right? So this equation will be exact only if del m del y is equal to del n del x. So what will be your del m del y? Okay, I have to differentiate with respect to e to the power x. and no it, it won't be exact right but did we find that we have to multiply this or uh, did you multiply anything for integrating no it won't be a uh, exact equation So here your m is this, right? 
this is m and this is n so what is your del m del y is minus 3x square plus 4xy okay and what is del m del x is minus 3x square but this is oh this is minus to minus plus 4xy okay so here these conditions is satisfied so this equation is exact now how i will solve this exact equation okay this is uh, right this is del m del y is equal to del m del x कैलकुलेशन राइटलीम रईटेस मैम ओके दैट मीन दिस इक्वेशन इज एक्ट नाउ वाट आई हेव टोल्ड यू दैट यू हेव टू integrate md uh, mdx then taking y constant that means uh, this is x2 i am not writing this m here again right i am just integrating term by term for minus x is y plus x square y square right i have taken y constant i have just integrated with respect to x taking y constant now i will integrate n the terms of n which does not contain x that means i have only term is y cube okay i am just the terms of n which does not contain x this is nothing but minus y cube Minus minus y four y four. Okay, so our solution will be what will be our solution tell me what will be my solution integration of m dx plus integration of n dy means x to the power 4 by 4 minus x cube y uh, plus x square y square and minus y to the power 4 by 4 and there will be a con right this is u is equal to c your d u is equal to 0 so your u is equal to c yes this is u function of x and y now suppose i am just integrating okay the whole term that is n dy some books have this 
also this cf that means you will have another term that is keeping x constant the term will be what will be this term minus minus plus 2x square that means x square y square and another will be another will be zero okay ma'am that will be minus x cube y because we are taking x cube constant and okay. then x cube constant right so taking it uh, it uh, taking x constant okay so whatever i am saying that these two terms we have already obtained in the first equations okay first term right when i am saying this that's why we have ignored those terms which are already obtained and you remember since your aim uh, is xy it will have terms containing x and y and similarly n x and y and you will if you get the similar terms and basically the, if i can prove or something how you get this because if you integrate uh, those terms you will that that will see that if these terms is already obtained and you are taking the repetition so we just ignore those terms okay suppose you don't remember that you don't remember that you have to integrate the terms which does not contain x so what then what we will do you will integrate with respect to y taking x constant and then you integrate and leave those terms which are common to both these and you will whatever terms you get you will add those terms and that will be your is equal to c because your aim is nothing but del u del x and your n is nothing but del u del y okay and that's why we are integrating and since it's a partial so there will be some terms involving in both and x and y so that's why we are uh, okay you may go through the proof of this necessary and sufficient condition for the second part and then you will uh, realize how this uh, second term ignoring part is uh, if we have constructed that we can just use those terms which have already obtained in the first part so whatever is convenient to you that is you integrate both the terms and remove uh, that whichever is duplicate only take ones don't duplicate or otherwise you integrate these terms and even you can do it the other way that is you integrate for first ndy taking all terms and then mdx just taking the terms which does not contain y that is the same process okay now so basically if is equation is exact we can easily solve it so we try to find out whether this equation is exact or not now sometimes it may happen a differential equation is not exact but i can make them exact by multiplying a factor which is called integrating factor suppose your differential equation is this which is not not exact that is del m del y not is equal to del n del x but suppose you multiply by some it may be constant it may be function of x and y such that this differential equation is exact that is mu m is your now changing the coefficient of this then this mu will be called an integrating factor of this differential equation and 
these integrating factors may be in infinite in numbers means suppose you multiply mu and then your 2 mu your 3 mu or any multiple of mu by any function or constant you will make this equation as uh, exact in suitable form so there are number of in integrating factors will be infinite there are four basically we will use four formulas and you don't need to go for the proof you will just remember the statements how to find out these integrating factors such that and uh, differential equation becomes exact then we make it exact and solve by the methods just learned now i am just telling you that if not otherwise mentioned you can solve the differential equation in your chosen method there is no such restrictions so suppose okay maybe there will be some this type of problems so show that this is integrating factor integrating factor of okay so first i have to check whether del m del y is equal to your m is y x y plus 2 x square y square your n is this so what is your del m del y okay check whether first check whether this equation is exact or not then multiply this by this integrating factor and then tell me whether this becomes exact or not check it now so what is the result it is an exact equation no no ma'am no right then multiply this by this integrating factor that is already given 1 by 3 x cube y cube and then check whether this condition is satisfied
So you have checked, right? Yes, sir. Fine. Now we will. There are some rules for finding your integrating factor. Okay. So we will do two. Today we will do two two of them, and the another two will be the next, and the other question. Okay. So rule number one is very simple. That suppose your obviously here all the differential equation I am taking is in this form, m dx plus n dy is equal to zero, and this is an homogeneous in x and y. Okay, so and m x plus n y you can easily by inspection you can tell whether this uh, equation is homogeneous or not. And if m x plus n y not is equal to zero, then one by m x plus n y is an integrating factor. So I am giving an example. Suppose x four plus y four dx minus x y cube dy is equal to zero. So here m is x four plus y four, and n is minus x y cube. So your del m del i is four y cube, and del n del x is equal to minus y cube. So these two are not same. So this equation is not exact, right? And you can see this is four. This is four. This is one plus three four. So this is homogeneous and x and y. I can see that. So I have to now. And if I multiply this by x and this by y, I will find that this is nothing but x to the power five plus x y four. Minus x y four, and you can see this is not is equal to zero. So your one by x to the power five will be an integrating factor. So what we will do? We will multiply this by Okay, and then you can separate, and you can integrate. I think easily. This will be dx by x. This will be y four x five, and it multiplication is for all. So this will be y three x four. That means I can. Y four, I can y cube x is cube, y t x minus x t y. I can write in this way. This is y cube, x is cube. So there is a y here, x is square here, and I have taken this y cube, so x here. Right. This is fine. So I can write dx by x plus this is d of y by x, right? This is d of Y by x. So no, there will be a minus sign here. Okay. So I may integrate this. Right. 
this is y by x a whole cube d by y by x means basically x is cube dx so this will be log x 1 by 4 y by x 1 to the power 4 is equal to c it's okay yes ma'am yes okay there are some problems given in the pdf in the exercise section okay so you may find out uh, there may be some problems which is suitable for this problem number 1 okay uh, that is for rule number 1 so next i will go for rule number 2 now another problem is m dx n dy is equal to 0 and the form of the equation you can write such way that it is y uh if f of xy that is you have a some function xy dx x is equal to zero. Then one by m x minus n y will be an integrating factor provided m x minus n y not is equal to zero. Whose obviously you can understand this condition is required for this uh, division okay now what that mean this type of forms is like suppose you have y x y plus 2 x square y square this can be called as a function of x y right dx plus x and i am telling you if you know other easier methods to solve you can always use that no problem okay so this is a function of xy it's in this form now first we have to check whether this is exact or not so what is del m del y is del m del y is 2xy uh plus 4x square y and del n del x is 2xy minus 3x square y square right so these two are not same so this equation is not exact so i am finding out whether this 1 by mx minus ny is zero or not if not x that means x square y square plus 2 x is cube y cube minus x is Square y square plus x is cube y cube. That means it does this will be cancelled. One by three x is cube y cube is the an integrating factor is this. One by three x is cube y cube. Fine. Then. Okay, multiply this and solve this, and tell me whatever result you got. Mm 
that is you multiply the whole equation by this integrative factor means you have to multiply okay then you do this as second record and okay and multiply and tell me whatever result you got multiply then integrate and then tell me the solution Ma'am, tell me. Uh, uh, ln x square by two y minus one by x y equals to c. Ln x square by two y. Huh? Minus one by x y. Huh? Equals to c. Hmm. I have a doubt with this coefficient too. Probably this uh, two won't arise. I think everyone should check. Uh, I have the solution written here, and that doesn't contain this two. Yes, ma'am. Uh, probably the the two won't be there, right? Non x square by y minus one by x two equals to c. Right. These two won't be there. So you know how to solve this. So next class I will do the next two. Ma'am, 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 the okay. two can be adjusted in the c means constant. Oh, c. right, 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 right. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, pro. But then two can be adjusted. But then these coefficients will be changed, no? No, mutually uh, minus ln two. Uh, it okay. will be adjusted in C one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you integrate in different way, so your arbitrary constants may be different. And so, if this is only a constant term, so that can be uh, adjusted in your C part. Ma'am. Hello. Hello. Ma'am, I am telling that uh, instead of uh, multiplying the whole thing by one by three x cube by cube, we can simply do it by uh, multiplying it by one by x cube by cube. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you mean to say that even if you multiply by one by x cube by cube, that yes, will be ah uh, exact. Yes, ma'am. No, no. I am not talking about the. This, this is going to be an exact equation. We are getting the solution same. Yeah, because this is you are just multiplying by a constant term one third, and so that must be adjusted in the solution in the. Uh, 
Yeah, but okay, you, you will get the same because this doesn't have something. Okay, so if you don't multiply this by three, only this, you will get the same result. Uh, no, no, I think. Yes, ma'am, I have done it. I have done it. Okay. Okay. And you have got the same equation that is two. Okay, this is nothing but you are can canceling out this. And where this three go, gone into the integration, right? Somewhere. Oh, that three is already cancelled out. The cancel out, ma'am. And this right side is zero, so I can always cancel out this three. No problem. Okay, okay. So your one by x s q y q will be also be an integrating factor. Ma'am, you told earlier that uh, the number of integrating factors can be infinite because if mu right, is an right, integrating right, right. factor, right. The same goes with if three mu is a factor, then mu must also be a mu, factor. Mu, mu is also an integrating factor, right? Yes. And some other may find any other form of x and y, okay, which can make this function exact, maybe. In any other form, maybe. By inspection or something like that. Okay, so probably you have understood the process what we are trying to do. And uh, suppose you have given a differential equation. It you doesn't mean you have to make a exact or something like that. If you know that you can solve it by any known method known to you, then you can solve it. No problem. Okay, that is I am trying to emphasize that you are. Uh, learning some methods and you always apply some of those methods which are most convenient and suitable to you and maybe some integration some types of integration easier for you some maybe for others so whichever you prefer this is no point okay but i am just telling you that we solve this type of problems in this way okay and okay the next class that is next thursday at 11 i will do another two rules and and uh, whatever what i feel that you have done some bernoulli's differential equation in class 2 right yes ma'am right so that is known to you okay and you have done any partial differential equation in class 2 